I want you to talk about um, just stepping back uh, and talk about for a moment uh, about the reason why we are um, we are considering this alternative for artistic transport view. Um, we, after all, we have the perfectly well functioning the momentum conservation approach, and I mentioned before um, this uh, character Richard Feynman. He is a famous physicist and polymath, and he was talking about the difference between knowing something, knowing the name of some concept and understanding that concept. And th there is a difference, uh, and he kind of qualified that difference uh, by saying that if you understand something, you should be able to explain the concept in variety of different ways and at different levels of details also. So we are uh, talking continuously about this boundary layer theory. We, we don't have a unified theory yet, but we started talking about uh, well, no-slip condition at the wall and the gradient of velocity uh, near the solid surfaces. And this is just scratching the surface of the concept, but every time we come at it from a different perspective, we have a slightly deeper understanding, I hope. And uh, the looking at uh, the this flows the flows over the parallel plate for example that we were considering from the vorticity transport uh, point of view is uh, further in understanding of this so that that's the motivation uh, and we will continue talking about these two examples one is when we have only one mechanism of transport and when the plate is moving the fluid is class and otherwise and the other one is when the uh, the fluid is moving the plate is stationary so i think together these examples illustrate things quite well um, so we looked at this equation at the top of the page this is from uh, last lecture's notes this is vorticity transport it was obtained by taking curl of navier-stokes equations and when we consider example of the accelerated plate there is a reduced form of the equation where you have the local change of vorticity is uh, equal to the diffusive term on the right which is del squared of omega but what about the situation where we have convection and diffusion so let's uh, let's look at this so that would be the situation of a flat plate let's say it has a sharp leading edge and the flow is moving so there is an incoming uniform stream with a magnitude u so let's say that that flow starts uh, abruptly just as the plate was starting in the previous example uh, so that capital U was equal to zero at uh, initial time and then it's some kind of non-zero value at t greater than zero. So what will happen is there will be a boundary layer forming. And this would be the boundary layer thickness or the edge of the boundary layer at some time instant t2. And then as the time progresses, that boundary layer is going to grow. It's going to be T, well, sorry, this T1, T2, T3. Uh, and in, within that boundary layer, this is where vorticity is non-zero, right? So vorticity is generated somewhere at the surface and it's, it propagates through the fluid. Governing equation is the transport of vorticity is described by the same equation, but it now has an additional term. So this is still viscous dissipation plus some convective term and then I'm just bringing it to the other side. So the first term is the outward diffusion of vorticity. So this is normal uh, to the plate. And then the second term is convection. You see there is a V velocity component. This is the transport of vorticity by convection. So both mechanisms are working now. Um, and this is, in this example, this is predominantly in the x direction, so by the u velocity component. 
this is what's happening. The vorticity is generated at the plate. It diffuses vertically and it's convected horizontally. So both, both mechanisms are present and this is what accounts for that growth of the boundary layer in time and in space along the plate also. So that, uh, that's, I think, is a very useful insight. So what happens if there is a steady state? We were uh, talking about steady boundary layer flows. So if we have a balance between convective and diff diff convection and diffusion, then the local change is equal to zero. And that's, that's the steady condition. So that allows us, if we look at this whole boundary layer development in terms of the source or production of vorticity and how that vorticity is transported, I, I think that tells us a lot in terms of what uh, is happening in terms of the interaction between the, the boundary and the fluid. So let's consider this in a little bit more detail and I think that would give quite a comprehensive picture. So still talking about the uh, stationary plane boundary. Uh, we will talk about the pressure gradient in the x direction and there is an important aspect of the whole boundary layer theory. So let's say that there is an origin at the leading edge, there is a uniform flow uh, and there is a boundary layer that's forming here. So far away from the leading edge, the whole Prandtl's boundary layer theory hinges on one important assumption that this boundary layer thickness, let's call it delta, uh, delta is actually small compared to any dimension in Y that we are considering any object uh, whatever's happening to the streamlines away from the plate. So the boundary layer, when it grows, it grows slowly with space, right? So the streamlines are parallel. What that means is that the pressure gradient with respect to X over a flat plate is approximately equal to zero. In other words, uh, that pressure gradient uh, equal to zero, uh, there is this jargon term, uh, of small interactions between the boundary layer flow and the outer flow uh, where there is no vorticity. So the interactions are small. So the boundary layer is, grow, uh, is growing, but it pushes the surrounding fluid away only slightly. Remember we were talking about this edge of the boundary layer being a separating streamline. So the flow that, that's uh, coming from the left actually doesn't penetrate the boundary layer. It's kind of, it gets deflected by it. Uh, and that amount of deflection per length in X is actually small. So it's, the, the flow is largely parallel. It, it doesn't uh, uh, flow in the normal direction by any appreciable amount. That's the, uh, that's the assumption. That's, that works fine if you're not considering, if you're not zooming in into the leading edge. At the leading edge, the interactions are large. So this, this streamline, it actually deflected substantially. The flow was uniform, absolutely parallel. And then suddenly it encounters a plate. Uh, so that uh, there would be a stagnation point at the leading edge. The fluid particle that's coming directly at the plate will actually have to come to a stop. So that's uh, something is causing that deceleration and that is the pressure gradient. So the pressure gradient uh, in this region is not equal to zero. So the whole boundary layer theory actually doesn't work. In the vicinity of the leading edge, the, uh, there are large interactions between the, the plate and the flow. We, so uh, when we talk about boundary layer theory, uh, all these mechanisms of uh, vorticity transport, uh, we are actually considering the region away from the leading edge. So let's see what the Navier-Stokes equation look like and why the pressure gradient is of central importance. Let's consider actually Navier-Stokes equations at the wall at y equal to zero. Well, we recall that for 2D flow, omega z is minus du dy. 
so we can write this divide by density also and write 1 over rho uh, dp dx at y equals 0 equals minus kinematic viscosity mu of the rho mu over rho d omega dy y equals 0 so this term is the diffusive flux of vorticity so it's we already seen this right so this is um, diffusive flux of vorticity outward away from the plate there is no generation of vorticity here so all for if the plate is flat then all vorticity is introduced at the leading edge of the plate and that that's a that's kind of a neat result i think look the the equation is <clears throat> basically that whatever diffuses away from the wall is balanced by the pressure gradient in the x direction if the plate is flat the pressure gradient away from the leading edge where the interactions of the boundary layer and the outer flow are small dp dx is equal to zero so that term is not equal to zero close to the leading edge so whatever is generated by the flow interactions with the plate in terms of vorticity and that vorticity eventually diffuses outward it all happens in the region where the pdx is not equal to zero and that is close to leading edge on the other hand if we consider now accelerating plane boundary so that's the first example when, when the, the plate starts moving the situation is a little bit different just want to clarify this plane accelerates in tangential direction it's not moving normal to itself it's moving in its own plane this this is the situation so you have a plate it starts moving um, and the y direction is normal to it so the Navier-Stokes equations at the wall uh, look slightly different so depending on how the plane is moving if it's accelerating or moving steadily if it's accelerating then we have a non-zero generation of vorticity at the entire surface uh, that i mean now when we're in this uh, mind frame of looking at vorticity generation by moving surfaces i think this actually is intuitive um, well it makes sense at least but just want to capture this note that we can have a non-zero flux of vorticity maybe even if uh, the pressure gradient is equal to zero right and <clears throat> well i think it's uh, obvious from the equation right so if the first term on the right is zero the second could still be non-zero <laughs> and i made this note that this plate moves in tangential direction if the plate moves normal to itself so it just pushes the fluid up um, or if it moves down it doesn't generate vorticity right so it's only shear uh, stresses on the fluid elements that generate vorticity so I'll just put here normal uh, pressure gradient or normal acceleration uh, do not result in any vorticity transport or production this concept of vorticity transport though is uh, central I think this is uh, <sighs> When we talk about advanced understanding of fluid mechanics, the, the problems can be advanced and they, they can be time consuming and even um, completely non-tractable and require simplification. But uh, the underlying principles are uh, not really numerous. There are just some things that require deep understanding and then you can apply them throughout. So this this first principles approach of transport of fluid properties applies to anything uh, and we saw it apply to mass for example uh, to momentum and now to vorticity so please take a look at this and we'll be able to discuss it with somebody uh, i don't know it's uh, easier said than done particularly in this new format uh, and that's why i'm Kind of emphasizing if if you have a chance to answer somebody's questions through a forum or otherwise 
uh, please take advantage of this. Um, again, the, the difference between knowing about something and understanding is, is, is being able to express it in, in various ways and in various uh, levels of detail depending on what's needed, what, what the other person needs at the moment. Um, yeah, ideally, if you speak multiple languages, you should be able to explain it in different languages. And uh, Well, mathematics is one of the languages, right? So it's, uh, um, it, it certainly is um, well suited for, for the type of things we're discussing here. So at least you should be able to uh, describe the concepts that you understand, both verbally and mathematically. And so that, that's actually the advantage of this oral interviews that we're going to have starting next week. So we can, I can really um, talk to you and see how, how you're doing in that regard.